Number 42. Calculate the molar mass of each of the following compounds. I see that I have A through E, but unfortunately I don't think I have enough room to do them like I normally do, so I'll just write A and then maybe I'll erase and do B because there's a lot here. All right, so first off, we need to just find out how do we find a molar mass, right? A molar mass is just the sum of all masses on the periodic table, all right? So whenever they ask for a molar mass or if you have to use a molar mass, you're always going to go to the periodic table, no exceptions, all right? So for A, we need to find out the molar mass for HF. And the other thing that you should know is the units for molar mass. The units for molar mass is always gram per mole. No exceptions as well. So that's standard. So you'll always find a molar mass on the periodic table. You'll always put your answer in grams per mole. And when we say grams per mole, it always means grams per one mole. So whatever the number that you find out is how many grams it is per equal to one mole of that compound. All right. So how do we find a molar mass? What I like to do is I like to categorize. I love to categorize. I love to put everything in its place. It just makes everything easier. So for HF, what I do is I divvy up the individual elements. So what do I got here? I have H and I have F. And now what you're going to say is you're going to say, how many of each do you have? Now we're starting off easy, it seems, because there's one H here, hydrogen, and there's one F here. So there's one and one. And the next step is you always times by the number that you find for the mass on the periodic table. So now you got to search. you got to say, okay, let's see, hydrogen's over here, and fluorine is over here. So... 1 times 1.008 for hydrogen, 1 times 19.00, so this equals 19.00, this equals 1.008, and now it's the sum, so all you got to do is just add these two numbers up. So 19 plus 1.008, you get 19, um, well you get, actually you get 20, Point zero zero eight, And there you go. Now, this one, I'm not really caring about sig figs. Whatever you calculate is what it's going to be, all right? But just know that this is grams per mole. That's the unit for molar mass. So this one over here is 20.008 grams per mole. Let me just move this over here a little bit, just so that I have room. G per mole. Okay, A is done. Moving right along, B, we have NH3. So what are the elements that are involved in ammonia? Well, there's two elements, right? There's N and there's H. How many Ns are there? There's only one, right? There's one N, one nitrogen. And how many hydrogens are there? There's three. Now when we say that, then we can times them by their weights. Nitrogen on the periodic table is over here, 14.01. So 14.01 would be equal to, 1 times 14.01 is 14.01, and then hydrogen we found before was 1.008. So 3 times 1.008, you get 3.024. And now what do you do with the 14.01 and the 3.024? You will add them. That's it. So 3.024 plus 14.01 is 17.034 grams per mole. So there's 17.034 grams per every one mole of ammonia. So this is 17.034 grams per mole. Box B off. And do you see how we don't have enough room? So I'm just going to erase these in one Swoop, let's see if I get them all. <gasps> what happened? <laughs> um, I guess we're going to have to do it this way. It takes two seconds. Okay. So who is next? Let's see. Nitric acid. That's a strong acid. Super strong. You don't want to be touching that. So we got C. HNO3. 
what elements are involved in HNO3, nitric acid? We have three elements here, right? So one, two, and three. We have H, N, and O. How many H's do we have? One, because there's a one here, an imaginary one. How many nitrogens do we have? One, because there's a one right here, imaginary. And how many oxygens? Oh, there's three oxygens, right? That three is only to oxygen. So there's three here. Then we times by their numbers. Well, we know hydrogen from before, 1.008. So that's 1.008. We know nitrogen from before, 14.01. So 14.01. But now oxygen is new. Oxygen is over here. And what number are we going to take from that? 16. So 3 times 16 is 48. And what do we do after we get all of the masses for the individual elements? We sum them up. So that means addition. So add them all up. So 48 plus 14.01 plus 1.008. We get 63.018 grams per mole because that's the unit for molar mass. So 63.018 grams per mole. Check that one off. D. This is getting fun. Silver sul sulfate. Okay. So we got Ag2SO4. Elements in here, how many do you think? There's three elements here. There's Ag sulfur. Ag is silver. S is sulfur, and oxygen is, oh, is oxygen, duh, right? This G is not a individual element because it's a lowercase. All capital, starting with capitals, are a start of a new element. So how many Ags do we have? We have two, because the two goes for the Ag. How many sulfurs do we have? One, right, because there's an imaginary one here. And how many oxygens? Four. So now we multiply by the masses. I gotta find Ag. Ag is a transition metal, it's right here. So Ag is 107.9. So when you times that, two times 107.9, you get 215.8. Sulfur, which we gotta figure out, sulfur is right below Oxygen sulfur is right here, so in this case it's 32.06, so 32.06. And oxygen we found out from before, which was 16, right? So 4 times 16 is 64. And sum them up, so you got to add them all up. So 215.8 plus 32.06 plus 64, you get 300 and 11.86 grams per uh, grams per mole. So that's the answer to D. 318.86 grams per mole. Last one, boric acid. I think I could put it over here. Boric acid is B OH3. How many individual elements do we have here? You know what? I'm just going to move this a little bit over. Ooh. Oh boy. Let's see. No, not going to work. We're just going to we're just going to go with it. So how many individual elements are in boric acid? There's 3 of them, right? We have B, O, and H. How many borons are there? The B is here, right? There's 1 here. This 3 does not count for boron. So there's 1 boron. How many oxygens are there? Now, this is the first time that we're um, looking at parentheses. When there is something that's in parentheses, the subscript outside of it goes for everyone that's in the parentheses. So this is telling us that we have three oxygens and three hydrogens. So the three gets distributed. You got to distribute it between all the elements inside of the parentheses. So there's three oxygens and there's three hydrogens. Now we do the same thing as before. We times by 
what the mass is on the periodic table. We got to find boron. Boron is right here. Boron is 10.81. So 1 times 10.81 is just 10.81. 3 times 16, we found that one from before. So that's 48. Hydrogen we know from before is 1.008. So 3 times 1.008 was the um, 3.024. And now we just have to add up all of these numbers. We sum them up. So this would equal 10.81 plus 48 plus 3.024, 61.834, and that's grams per mole. So this is 61.834 grams per mole. Box that answer off, that's the answer. Awesome job, guys. Um, so, this is a super important concept to know because this will follow you for basically every chapter moving forward. We need it for stoichiometry. We may need it for molarity. We may need it for gases. So, this comes really in handy. You should not forget how to do this, and you should know how to do this super well. All right? So, highlight this type of question. Super important, you gotta know how to find the molar masses. But OpenStax gives you tens of problems just calculating molar mass, and I will do them all for you. And the next one is number 43. So stick around, we'll do it together again. All right, thanks for tuning in guys. Click the like button if this helped you out. Click the subscribe button if you want to be the first to know when we drop our next set of questions for you guys. It's always been a pleasure. I'll see you guys in the next question.